a symbol of the French monarchy's unpopularity. Marie Antoinette, the Queen Consort of France, was beheaded in front of a huge crowd on the 16th of October 1793 at the Place de la Révolution in Paris. Thousands of guards lined the street to ensure that her execution went ahead as planned and she was hated by sections of the French population. Her famous comment of let them have cake showed her frivolity and extravagance along with her disconnect to the French population who were suffering greatly. She fell from grace heavily and spent her last few days in prison a sharp departure from the rich lifestyle she was living. Today we look at the brutal execution of Marie Antoinette and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born on the 2nd of November 1755 in Vienna, Austria, Maria Antonia was the youngest daughter of the ruler of the Habsburg Empire, Empress Maria Theresa, and her husband Francis I, the Holy Roman Emperor. It was clear that she was destined to live a lavish lifestyle, and she spent her early years living in the royal Austrian palaces. She was well educated, however teachers commented on her lack of aptitude for learning, and she was rather poor at writing in different languages, and was also poor at speaking different languages. For princesses, mastering different languages was extremely important, as the hope was that they would marry a prince or king from a different country to forge alliances, and this did not stand Maria in good stead. She was a talented musician preferring more practical things than the academic, and it was said that her heart and character were excellent. In February 1770, Louis XV of France requested the hand of Maria for a match with his oldest surviving grandson, Louis Auguste, the Dauphin of France. This was accepted to seal an alliance between the nations, and the Dauphin and Maria became engaged, and then married by proxy. She met her husband on the 14th of May 1770 at Versailles, and there was a mixed reaction to the marriage. Marie initially was liked by the French people, but some did oppose the alliance with Austria. Following the death of Louis XV, the Dauphin became King Louis XVI, and Marie Antoinette became the Queen of France. She initially had little influence over her husband, but received extremely lavish gifts from the King. Allegedly one chateau she was gifted was renovated with the walls covered in diamonds and gold, and she continued to spend extremely heavily on luxuries. At the time France was suffering greatly from financial problems, and the people of France were in great hardship, with many being even unable to buy bread for their family. Because of this many poor people were dying, but in the face of this Marie the Queen kept spending huge sums of money on her dresses, hairstyles, luxuries and furniture. There were riots in France, and she began to become a figure of hatred, even being blamed for the economic crisis. Everyone could see what she was doing, but Marie ignored it. Her husband Louis was also suffering, a number of blunders had lent him poorly to the French population. The couple did have children, but problems in France still remained. There was a celebration, especially with the birth of the Dauphin, but Marie also became involved in European politics. At court she promoted her favourites, and it's alleged had affairs with high up members of society, but leaflets about the Queen's sexual deviance emerged across France. Allegations of the Queen having affairs and illicit behaviour was levelled against her, including accusations of affairs with women. With this her mother feared for her daughter's safety, but things continued spending large amounts of money, buying property and living the high life. More allegations emerged too regarding her lifestyle, with some levelling accusations of illegitimacy against her second born son. With Marie willing to become involved in politics, she wanted to improve her image. The diamond necklace affair occurred, which was a scandal at court, in which part of France's most valuable jewellery was virtually stolen. Tricks emerged and it was levelled that Marie Antoinette's name was linked to the swindling of the jewellery, and this further enhanced Marie's negative reputation, despite her lack of involvement. Louis XVI often asked Marie for advice on politics, but there was a situation brewing between the Assembly and the King, but the major factor in the revolution was the financial problems in France. This was due to a number of expensive wars Louis took part in, a royal family who spent heavily, an unwillingness from the higher up members of society to help out the lower classes. Marie became a target of disgrace and when the revolution broke out it had devastating consequences for the king and queen. The revolution in France had a number of key events that saw the monarchy overthrown. The storming of the Bastille was a sign of the king's decreasing power 
and how the people could rise up and overthrow the monarchy, and the anger they had towards Louis and Marie, and the desperation spurred on the revolt. The revolution even forced the royal family to move out of their palace, and European powers sought to try and find a way for the French royal family to escape the anarchy. Several plots were drawn up, but the Queen rejected them, as she refused to leave without Louis, her husband. The royal family found themselves imprisoned, and on the 21st of September 1792, the National Assembly declared France a republic. Previously, an angry mob had broken into the French royal palace and insulted Marie and threatened to kill her, and there was bloodshed inside of the palace. With the declaration of the Republic, Louis was placed on trial and was sentenced to death on the 15th of January 1793. He was then six days later executed by guillotine in front of a huge crowd in Paris. The Queen, now a widow, was in great mourning. She hoped that one day her son would become king, however was a prisoner to the French people. Whilst imprisoned at the Tower of the Temple, she along with her children were insulted and kept under strict watch to ensure she could not communicate with the outside. Marie's fate after Louis's execution became a big question, with debate occurring as what to do with her. Others wished to have her executed, but some wanted her exchanging in a swap for French prisoners of war, or even sending to America. Decisions were made to retrain her son, the eight-year-old Dauphin, in the ways of the revolution, and Marie was transferred from the temple to a small cell in the conciergerie. She was kept under constant watch and was given no privacy during this time. She was brought to trial by the Revolutionary Tribunal on the 14th of October 1793 and it's thought that the outcome had already been decided that she would be put to death. She faced a number of different charges, financial ones, ones regarding her relationships and even planning massacres. She was even accused of incest but little could be done and she was found guilty of three main charges of the depletion of the national treasury, of conspiracy against the security of the state, and of high treason, and for this she was sentenced to death. She believed the worst she would get would be imprisonment, so the death sentence came at a shock. In her final days she wrote to her sister-in-law, expressing her love for her children, and her devotion to Catholicism, and her will was made. In preparation for her execution, she was forced to change her clothes in front of the guards. She was forced to wear a plain white dress, although wished to wear a black one. Her hair was cut short against her wishes, to ensure that the guillotine took her life without any issue. As she was taken out of her cell, she was bound with her hands tied behind her back, painfully hurting the former Queen of France. Marie was then placed on a rope lead, and taken to her carriage. She was taken to her execution on an open cart, with it taking an hour to arrive at the Place de la Revolution. The crowds would have lined the streets as a slow cart moved throughout the city of Paris, and when she arrived at her execution site, the guillotine stood ready for her. At around 12.15pm on the 16th of October 1793, Marie Antoinette stepped onto the scaffold to greet Charles Henry Sanson, a notorious executioner who took her husband's head ten months before. He was stood in a black mask and probably never dreamed of the fact he would execute the Queen of France. As she approached the executioner, she stood accidentally on Samson's foot and said, Pardon me, sir, I didn't mean to. Whilst on the scaffold it was said she maintained her composure, but the crowd hurled insults and jeers at her. A priest accompanied her and everything was ready for the Queen's execution. Minutes after she made her way onto the scaffold, she was placed onto the guillotine. Marie Antoinette's execution was remarkably swift, as was common with the guillotine, and her head was taken clean off by the blade. She would have been placed onto the board then slid under the blade before it fell, and within seconds her head was taken clean off. Her head was then held up to the crowd, and Sanson proclaimed to the roaring crowd, Viva la Republic! Marie Antoinette's remains were then taken to a graveyard behind the church de Medellin, around a half a mile away. The gravediggers were on a lunch break, which allowed Madame Tussaud to take a wax imprint of her face, before she was then placed in an unmarked grave. Decades later her body was exhumed, and she was given a proper burial, and it was said that some of her white hair remained on her skeleton. Marie Antoinette was a very divisive figure in France, and the vast majority of the French population greatly disliked her for her lavish spending, all whilst the French were struggling to buy loaves of bread. 
she was a figure of the monarchy in France and became a controversial figure of the French Revolution. Some see her as a scapegoat, but what cannot be excused is the expense she spent on nonsense during her time as Queen, gambling away thousands whilst everyone was suffering. Without Marie, there most probably would not have been a revolution in France. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.